Okay, in this lesson, we're going to learn another method for dividing polynomials, and it's called synthetic division. But I want you to take your notebook out because there is a note for this section. First off, to use synthetic division, you must have a linear divisor, and that means your divisor has to have a degree of 1. So in this example, they're asking us to divide this polynomial right here by this polynomial. And remember, the divisor is what you're dividing by. So we take a look at this polynomial, and to figure out the degree that it has, we take a look at the largest exponent. When an exponent is missing from a term, its exponent is 1. So the degree of this polynomial of the divisor is a degree of 1. So yes, it is linear. So let's go ahead and take a look at how we set up our synthetic division. The very first thing we do is I am going to draw a box, just like this. And I'm not going to fill my box in yet, but what I am going to do is I'm going to take a look at my polynomial, my dividend, and I'm going to take off of all the coefficients from my polynomial. And I want to be very clear, this polynomial must be in order. So its degrees for each of the term has to be 3, 2, 1, and 0. This polynomial is in order. The coefficient of the very first term is a coefficient of 1. It's missing, so it's a 1. The coefficient of term number 2 is negative 14. The coefficient of the third term is a positive 51. And the coefficient of our very last term is a negative 54. Okay, how do I figure out what is going to go in my box over here? Well, I take my divisor, x plus 2, and I set it equal to 0, and I solve. And when I solve this, I get a negative 2. I am going to put a negative 2 in my box. So synthetic division is just memorizing a process of how to divide. Alrighty, so the very first step in synthetic division is to pull our very first number down. It doesn't matter whether it's a 1, a 2, a negative 8. We take that very first number and write it underneath our line. The next step is to take what's in the box, whatever's under your line, and you multiply. So negative 2 times a positive 1 is negative 2. Our next step then is to add these two numbers. So when we add these two numbers, we get a negative 16. And we're going to continue in this fashion until we've used up all the numbers up here. So we're going to multiply again. It's a series of multiplying and adding, multiplying and adding. So we're going to multiply. Negative 2 times negative 16 is a positive 32. Then we're going to add these two numbers and we get an 83. Now we're going to multiply again, and negative 2 times 83 is a negative 166. And when we add, we're going to get a negative number, and we're going to get a negative 0. Let's see, 11, 12, remember your 1, 2, and negative 220. So what do all these numbers on the bottom actually mean? These numbers on the bottom. This last one here, if you can believe it or not, that is the remainder of our division. The way that we build our quotient, this part is represented by our quotient. The way that we build our quotient is this has degree 0, this has degree term number 1, and this has degree 2, which is our second term. These happen to be our coefficients in front of our our x's or whatever variable is being used and in this case it is x so our first coefficient is 1 and we're going to take our variable and raise it to this degree our second coefficient is a negative 16 we're going to take our variable and raise it to degree 1 and we don't need to write a degree 1 um, because it's assumed to be a 1 if it's missing and then our last coefficient is 83 and we can take our variable if we want, x, and raise it to 0, but x to the 0 power, anything raised to the 0 power is just 1, so we're just going to write it like this. And then our remainder is negative 220, and we know what we do with our remainder. We write it in fraction form, negative 220 over our divisor, x plus 2. And there we go. That is how you divide using synthetic division. Remember, 
our divisor must be linear to be able to use synthetic division.